Welcome to Hardin El Sol, the demonstration garden for Salinas Valley Recycles at our Sun Street Transfer Station and Recycling Center. I'm Jana Falk, the Recycling Coordinator, and this is Estella Gutierrez, Recycling Technician. And we're here today to talk about worm composting or vermicomposting. Worms are a great decomposer and wonderful composter for your backyard. Worms love to eat leftover fruit, vegetables, and grains. They will happily turn it into some of the best fertilizer on earth. Worm compost, otherwise known as worm castings or vermicompost, is a fascinating, fun, and easy way to recycle your food scraps. A worm bin requires very little work, produces no offensive odors, and provides worm castings that help plants grow healthy. Let's learn about our decomposer worms. Compost worms are called red worms or red wigglers. They are different from the earthworms you normally find on the ground. These worms have a big appetite, reproduce quickly, and grow well in confinement. They can eat half or more of their weight in food every day. Common earthworms and nightcrawlers do not survive well in bins since they normally live under the soil surface. One pound of red wigglers is all you need to get started. There are many benefits of composting with worms. Composting with worms saves money on garbage bills, improves the fertility and water holding capacity of garden soil, benefits the environment by recycling valuable organic material, and helps expand the life of our landfill space. Worms like to eat most of the things we do, except they're not as picky. When you're prepping in your kitchen and you're chopping up fruits and vegetables, you can add the trimmings to your kitchen compost pail. Once you've added the fruits and vegetables to this bin, you'll bring them out to your worm bin when they're ready. Stale bread, apple cores, lettuce trimmings, coffee grounds, and non-greasy leftovers are just some of the foods we usually discard that worms love. Do feed worms, vegetable scraps, fruit scraps, and peels. Mold and rot is fine. Bread and grains, tea bags, non-greasy leftovers, coffee grounds and filters, crushed eggshells, napkins, and paper towels. Worms prefer smaller sized scraps and will eat through them more quickly than large or whole pieces of food. Include some chopped up soft food like melon, grapes, or cooked vegetables, or somewhat rotten food that will decompose quickly. After the first feeding, feed the worms weekly starting out with about a quart of food scraps each week. Do not feed your worms meat, fish, greasy foods, dairy products, twigs and branches, dog, cat, or bird feces, and don't overfeed citrus. Citrus should be no more than one-fifth of total worm food, but you can put those in your regular compost pile. Now let's set up a worm bin. We need to make their home like their natural habitat which is under piles of fallen leaves or manure. You will need at least four inches of bedding to keep the worms cool and moist. The bedding also gives them fiber to eat and discourages fruit flies from getting into the food. For best results, make bedding from a mixture of materials, included shredded, non-glossy newspaper, brown leaves, straw, sawdust, shredded corrugated cardboard, finished compost, well rotted and rinsed horse manure, or coconut pith fiber. A handful of soil provides microorganisms and grit to help the worms grind their food. Put the bedding in your bin, moisten with water, and mix until it's a little wetter than a wrung out sponge. You are now ready to add the worms and food. You can use a plastic storage bin, a shipping crate, a commercial worm bin, or a homemade wooden bin. Bins should be eight to 14 inches deep and have a tight fitting lid to keep out rodents and birds. Drill quarter inch holes in the bottom, on the top and sides, about seven inches apart to provide ventilation and drainage. Set the bin on supports so excess moisture can drain out. Hardware and discount stores carry an assortment of plastic storage containers that can be made into bins or you can reuse an extra container you might already have lying around. Ultraviolet light is toxic to worms, so bins should be made from an opaque material. The rule for bin is two square feet of surface area per person, or one square foot of surface area per pound of food waste generated each week. Vegetarians often find they need a bin with four square feet of surface area per person. Add four to six inches of moistened bedding material, then make a hole in the middle of the bedding. Add one pound of worms and one pound of food waste. Feed the worms weekly, starting with about a quart of food scraps per week and moisten the bin at least once a week. As the worms multiply, you can add larger quantities of food scraps. After a few months, you can add about an inch of food scraps per week. To avoid fruit flies and odors, 
blackberry food under a top layer of bedding. Do not dump and run. Worms prefer smaller sized scraps and will eat through them more quickly than larger or whole pieces of food. The ideal temperature for compost worms is 59 to 77 degrees. Good spots for your bin. Under a tree, alongside a house, garage, patio or deck, or under the eaves, or even in a shed. Place your bin in the shade or in an area where it will only receive limited morning light and, if possible, under a tree or an overhang to protect from frost. Make sure rainwater cannot enter the bin through the lid. Harvesting worm compost. After you've fed your worms for three to six months, you'll see some worm compost in your bin. You can harvest what there is or wait until your bin is nearly overflowing. No matter which method you use, some worms will remain in compost. Worms put in the garden with the compost will not live long, but your main goal is to reserve enough worms to restart your bin. Here are a few methods for separating the worms from the compost. Method one, most of the uneaten food, bedding, and worms will probably be in the top third of your bin. Remove this material, worms and all, and put it aside to start a new bin. Remove the remaining material from the bin to use as compost. Put the uneaten food, bedding, and worms back in the bin and resume feeding and maintaining your bin. Method two, this method works only if bins are over three feet long. Move the contents of your worm bin to one side. Place fresh bedding in the empty space and bury your food waste there for a few months. Harvest the other side after most of the worms have moved to the new food and bedding. Method three, spread a sheet of plastic out in the sun. Dump the contents of the worm bin and build a few cone-shaped piles on the sheet. Gently remove the top layer of each pile until you see worms. To escape the light, the worms will dive deeper into the pile. After repeating this process every 20 minutes or so for a few hours, you will be left with a wriggling pile of worms. Return the worms to their bin with some of the compost for bedding. Using your worm compost. Using your finished product will help your plants thrive by adding plant growth hormones, beneficial microorganisms, humus, and nutrients to the soil. Vermicompost is lumpy and clay-like when removed from the bin. You can use it right away or let it sit in an open plastic bin or bag away from the rain and sun for one to four months to transform into a fine grain product. Sprinkle a layer at the base of indoor or outdoor plants, making sure compost is not piled up against plant stems. Cover with soil or mulch. You can also blend worm compost up to 20% into potting mix or garden soil. Let's go over some troubleshooting. Are the worms dying? The problem may be too much food in the bin or it's starting to heat up like hot compost. Maybe it's too dry or too wet. Solution, feed less food or less often, or start another bin. If it's too dry, add water until slightly damp. If it's too wet, add dry shredded paper. Is your bin attracting ants? The problem is likely it's too dry. Add water until slightly damp and keep it moist. Is your bin attracting flies? The problem may be food is exposed or you're having a spring fruit fly invasion. Try burying your food completely, cover with more bedding, or feed less fruit. Do you have sow bugs, beetles, or other critters in the bin? That's not a problem. These are good for your compost. If your worm bin starts to smell bad, it could be a sign that you're adding more food than the worms can process. If too much food is added, it can even heat up and kill the worms. Quit feeding for a while, and when most of the food has been eaten, you can start feeding them again. Worm composting is beneficial to the plants, is affordable, and a way to recycle food scraps and make nutrient-rich compost fertilizer. It can also help our planet heal by reducing the amount of waste that goes into the landfill. Thank you for joining us for the composting workshop today. We hope you found the information valuable. Follow us on social media and check out our website at salinasvalleyrecycles.org for more information.